Let's go! Emory Jones commits to LSU. This is great news. Oh my goodness. He was our number one uncommitted prospect for quite some time. And LSU gets some much needed offensive line help. Obviously, we're going to look at this from so many different angles, but this seems to, da, 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 this seems to be a question that I get a lot, and I'm going to throw it out to you for you to get involved in the comment section. Who's a better offensive line prospect, Emory Jones or Walker Howard? I say Walker Howard or Will Gamble. And speaking of uh, Walker Howard, here's a photo of Emory Jones with Walker Howard after they faced each other. Last year in a shootout, St. Thomas More uh, was able to defeat uh, Catholic High. I do feel pretty good about Emory Jones out of Baton Rouge committing to LSU and actually signing with LSU and playing alongside Walker Howard and Will Campbell. So, yes, this is huge for LSU. They obviously need to build off its line depth, and Emory Jones certainly helps out in that aspect. Could he play right away in year one? Absolutely, and I think he's good enough to do that. Knowing his athleticism, knowing our film studies, knowing that you know his quickness is there, his strength is there. Some people feel he needs to get a little trimmed up. I think he carries his weight currently well just based on the limited film study that I've done on this channel. We've done two different film studies, and it's pretty clear that Emory Jones has been the best lineman on the field in practically every game that he's played. So, you know, I do think he is really special, and he will be on the field for LSU no later than year two as a full-time starter. Now, will that be at guard or at tackle or potentially center? Here's what's really interesting about Emory Jones is that he has the capability of playing all five positions. Not a whole lot of offensive linemen have that capability, but Emory Jones definitely can and it's been proven just by watching him play and watching him handle himself this is huge and he comes from a good program in catholic high so he's going to be locked up and ready to go now can he decommit yeah uh, absolutely anyone could decommit nowadays uh anyone could decommit previous to this season but obviously there are so many new factors whether it's the nil whether it's the transfer portal and how things you know, fluctuate as far as roster size is concerned. I do think Emory Jones is a huge, huge, huge guy to lock in, even more so than Jacoby Matthews based on LSU's offensive line depth. And I I just really think he's going to play a lot in, in year one, um, potentially year two. So, you know, I this is huge, absolutely huge for Brad Davis to get this done. Now, what is next for LSU's offensive line recruiting? Well, it's simple. Go get Julian Armella. That seems to be the elite prospect that has the most steam. LSU just picked up Mason Taylor. Uh, we'll link that video down below as well. Mason Taylor is a teammate of Julian Armella at St. Thomas Aquinas High School, so maybe that does help out. He is a four-star offensive tackle that could definitely bolster LSU's offensive line. Then, of course, you have the five stars out there like a Devon Campbell. Could LSU flip Kelvin Banks uh, to LSU? Hopefully, that is a possibility, but we'll see what happens there. But the big news is that Emory Jones, he's probably always wanted to be an LSU Tiger, getting to play for the home city school, not just the home state, the home city school, Catholic High, Clyde Edwards Alaire. What's up? That is so cool. Jared Small for this next season. So, yeah, I, I'm obviously really excited about Emory Jones making this announcement. So, yeah, when you look at the depth of the offensive line, you are losing, at the very least, three projected starters for right now. Uh, Ed Ingram, Liam Shanahan, and, of course, Austin Deculus. And, of course, you got to throw in Dare Rosenthal, even though he left before the season. And you're going to be left next season with only a few guys with real playing experience uh, in, in Cam Wire, potentially Chase and Hines. And I also project Anthony Bradford to play a lot next season. So the group is going to be very inexperienced and very unproven. And obviously a big man in this equation is Brad Davis. Uh, you know, yes, Emory Jones is a big time commitment, but a lot of LSU's offensive line issues under James Craig last season what was deeper than just the recruiting of the offensive line where James Craig missed on a lot of 
out-of-state offensive linemen, and the entire LSU staff missed on it. So, yes, Brad Davis has a lot uh, on his plate when it comes to recruiting the guys like we mentioned, Armella, Campbell, uh, Devon Campbell, um, and, and a bunch of other names that we can mention here. So, yes, uh, the offensive line recruiting from this point forward has to get better because I do think LSU needs to get one or two more offensive linemen, whether that that comes from high school recruiting or whether that comes from the portal. Uh, a lot of that is going to need work uh, because you're losing a lot of playing experience. And on top of that, uh, outside of just the recruitment of the offensive line, the development of the offensive line has got to be better. LSU last season just gave up so many unblocked blitzers. So it wasn't just a physical thing. It was a, a mental thing last year. And Brad Davis is not only going to have to fix that for this next season, but for many years beyond. So yeah, this is a, a, a pretty bad issue. And that's why Emory Jones is such a critical piece. When you think of brands, uh, LSU has a lot of big-time brands at a lot of different positions, except the offensive line. When you think about it as far as based on the past five or ten years, you could make a case that LSU is a top-five school for pretty much every position outside of the offensive line. And you look, whether it's the NFL draft or, or just Louisiana prospects in general, LSU has never been known for that position. Now, that doesn't mean that they haven't had great offensive linemen in the past. They have had plenty of great offensive linemen in the past. Heck, you look at the 2007 offensive line, they were an all-time great LSU offensive line, and I believe none of them turned out to really be big-time NFL players. So you could have great offensive lines without elite uh, cornerstone offensive you know, Pro Football Hall of Famers, but the the unit has to be better, and, you know, hopefully the Simbury Jones commitment makes LSU more of an offensive line destination. So, on top of the depth, Brad Davis has got to fix the, the, the development, the communication. There's so many different things that this unit uh, is going to need to work itself out with. I didn't say that smoothly, but you get the point. And a lot of you have been looking at the offensive line depth. As you can see, a bunch of unproven names. Uh, guys like, you know, most notably Cardell Thomas with all the hype that he was coming in. But really, a lot of the names uh, you've seen here are are guys that, that are unproven. And that's why it's going to take a lot. And I mean a lot of work to get this unit fixed. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. And that's why, you know, I, I've said for so long, Emory Jones is such a key commitment and this is you know big considering you know Jacoby Matthews decommitted earlier but at the very least LSU is known for DBU <laughs> LSU will never really have an issue getting elite defensive backs to LSU now it is a little bit of an issue because they don't have any safeties committed now but let's be honest that's going to be fixed we don't know about offensive line recruiting. Uh, we, we simply don't know, and that's the scary thing, and that's why you know Brad Davis is getting paid uh, a lot of money to fix this this issue, and also a lot of LSU's offensive line issues will hopefully be fixed by the type of offense Jake Peets is going to run next season. So you take a look at LSU's offensive line room for 2022, Fitzgerald West and Bo Bordelon, both three-star prospects. Fitzgerald West has a lot of upside. Uh, he's listed as a defensive lineman. I think LSU views him more as an offensive lineman. And, of course, he was the most recent lineman commit for LSU. And then, of course, uh, Bo Borderline, who's been on board for quite some time. He's an LSU legacy. He also goes to Newman High School, which, of course, that's where Arch Manning is, a 2023 quarterback and fellow 2022 uh, commit A.J. Johnson at wide receiver. And then, of course, you have Will Campbell, right? Uh, the five-star who is fantastic out of Monroe. Shout out North Louisiana. Uh, you know what's interesting? I, I do get this question a lot. Will Campbell or Emory Jones? I, I do slightly lean Will Campbell, uh, but Emory Jones is close. I, I really do believe this, and I felt this before Emory Jones' rating started to shoot up. I think he's a top 200 guy, and I think 
you know, before this offseason, he was outside the 250 mark. Uh, I do think Emory Jones is really, really, really good. And that's obviously really good news for LSU. Uh, but like we mentioned earlier, I do think LSU wants to get a five or six offensive lineman haul. So that could be Julian Armella. That could be uh, a, a transfer portal guy. But what's very interesting about the offensive line position is, and, and this is going to sound kind of weird, but offensive linemen do not get subbed out. So they have a huge impact on the game because they obviously play every single snap. And there was just too many times last season where the LSU offensive line would give up a blatant mistake. So you really need to have rock-solid guys. And on top of that, while only five linemen normally play in a game, you do also have offensive linemen that are big pieces on field goal team. And on top of that, you do also have injuries on the offensive line. And with LSU playing a fast-paced offense, you're going to get a lot of injuries. Uh, So really, you need eight or nine offensive linemen that are able to play uh, at all times. And obviously, you know, you saw all those names a minute ago. Uh, the Kimo McAneolis of the world, Xavier Hills, Marlon Martinez, Cardell Thomases, uh, Marcus Dumervilles. You know, LSU's going to need some of those guys to pan out or else uh, these newcomer names that you've seen mentioned are, are going to have to, you know, play a lot, which is obviously uh, as true freshmen, which is something that, you know, LSU wants to avoid. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, uh, get involved in the comment section down below. This is such a great news. Such a great news. This is such great news. Congrats to Emory Jones. It is power hour LSU. Boom. Oh, yeah, I think we're doing states tonight. Let's go.